So I gave up like everything that I had worked up until that point. Yeah. In order to start this company. How do you build a network, run a profitable business and make an impact? Oh, and have a personal life at the same time. That's the question. And this podcast is the answer. I'm your host, Chaz Wilson, husband, father of five, author of the book, five plus one, president and co-founder of Master Networks, Inc., a national networking organization. Look, each week I bring you successful entrepreneurs who will share success strategies of how to effectively build a network, add valuable wisdom to your journey, and help you succeed. Welcome to Connect, Share, and Prosper. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 82 of Connect, Share, Prosper. Hard to believe episode 82. Feels like we just started uh, this uh, Connect, Share, Prosper experiment. And uh, we're into episode 82 with a special guest today, which I'll introduce in just a second. But welcome, everyone, to Connect, Share, Prosper. Make sure, as always, you subscribe to this page and to our YouTube channel. So every time the new episodes come out, you get notified of the new episode. So super excited today. And as you come on, make sure you uh, uh, put your name and where you're from and uh, get your questions for Carl today. So here we are for Connect, Share, Prosper, episode 82. Super excited about it today. Caitlin, welcome to the show. Lene, welcome. People starting to hop on, love it. Uh, Andriana, welcome. Guys, share it with your friends. This is going to be a powerful podcast today, episode 82. Got some fun. We might go off script a little bit today. We'll see. We'll see how it goes, see how it flows. So here we go. Uh, My guest today, Carl Scarmuza, is the founder and president of Credit Blueprint, leading business funding and net worth authority. He's driven to help people understand the true power of credit, which we're going to get into today, and what credit has to do with growing your bottom line and how that all uh, plays in. And so he believes that the credit is more than a score or a number, but the primary tool you'll need to grow your net worth. And we'll talk about that. He's reviewed over 50,000 credit reports and worked with thousands of people to guide them through what it takes to start reaping the benefits of great credit. But before founding Credit Blueprint, Carl worked in the mortgage industry. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk about that and some stories we both probably have in common. He, sh- he saw firsthand how difficult it was for those with poor credit to buy homes, and he saw there the opportunity, uh, an opportunity to help people buy homes, achieve their dreams, and set themselves up for strong financial future. And so he founded in 2011 Credit Blueprint, and despite some struggles, uh, even some setbacks of his own, he grew the business and led the company to seven straight years of A business ratings. Now, unlike many other credit companies, he doesn't believe in a big box approach. He works with very cu- with the customers to create personalized credit strategy. In fact, we were talking about that before we even launched the episode. And so with that, I'm super excited to welcome Carl Scarmuza, Credit Carl, to episode 82 of Connect Share Prosper. Welcome, my friend. Chaz, my friend, right back at you. I appreciate you having me on. Were you a good public speaker in high school? No. No, I was shy. Yeah, I was shy, man. It's funny, like people who see you today who knew you then, it's like, what? Who's this guy, right? Oh, I couldn't do it. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't stand up and tell you what my homework was or anything like that. None, none of that stuff. But the way you just read my bio, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Well, I'm for hire. If you want me to travel around and introduce you, <laughs> introduce you places, I mean, I'm more than, more than happy to do that. So listen, I, I'm excited because I think there's some things about, and I, and I mean, look, we talked about this right before we started. I mean, how many people get excited to talk about credit? <clears throat> like, cause look, if your credit's really good, you're like, Hey, my credit's really good. And if it's not, you really don't want to talk about it. So you kind of get stuck in between there. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so let's not necessarily talk specific to credit. Although I want to give some tips for those, especially who want to improve their credit, but let's talk about, let's start somewhere in 2011. You were, you saw this thing in the mortgage industry. I mean, I, I felt it hard. I was in real estate mortgage at that time too. What was it that you were seeing and where did you see the opportunity? Because I think that's the key in business is seeing opportunity and jumping. What did you see and why then did you make that shift? Mm, man, I'd love to agree with you. I, I, I did see an opportunity, but I saw more of my income go down. So in 2008, I, I, I lost a lot of income. Like to go back, the mortgage industry, I was making, you know, $200,000 a year, which at the time in, you know, 06, 07, 08, I, I thought I was the richest man in the world. I mean, right. I went one year to college and I thought that was just an amazing living. And I thought I was the smartest dude ever. And then in, uh, in 08, you know, 
the bottom hit the hit, you know, and then I lost, got my income cut in half. And I was like, okay, the, the run's over. Like I got super negative about the mortgage business. And I was like, it's over, but you're not going to mm. make any more money in mortgages. It's we're at the bottom. And I jumped out and, and started messing around doing credit repair. A buddy of mine owned a company and I, I really hated it in the beginning. I mean, I've just, I didn't, I didn't understand it. I didn't have a connection to the customer that needed help uh, because my credit was kind of always good uh, up and through that time. I always had like, you know, 750 credit scores and I could walk into a dealership. I had multiple mortgages. So I just, you know, I just couldn't yeah, right. relate. Uh, and I had no, no relationship with credit. So I tried to get back into the, the mortgage business, which unfortunately didn't work. Fortunately for me, did not work out. I, I failed a drug test and you know, I've never done a drug in my life, but I failed this drug test to get back into the mortgage industry, which forced my hand in credit. So I was forced to learn this, this credit business and uh, was doing that for a couple of years. And I, I knew that um, when you talk about like seeing opportunities and stuff, I knew there was something there. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people needed help at the time, you know, because everybody was starting to let stuff go with credit. They were starting to let the houses go, the cars go. And then all of a sudden, it was, the credit cards were the first thing to go. Everybody let their credit cards go in 08, 09, 2010. You know, we're starting to see a lot of people that really needed help. Yeah. So, so I'm interested that like you see a downturn, you see a downturn in your, mar in your markets, you see a downturn in your income, and your thought is to go into the credit, which is interesting. It almost feels like to some that would be like go the other direction into something else. But I, I think that's fascinating. Yeah. You want me to tell you I'm a visionary? Cause I'm not. What it was, was a way to make more money, right? At the time I was like, how do I get back to making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year? Because that's what I was used to. Yeah. And that's how I jumped into the credit space was, you know, I saw, man, we were, we were doing hundreds of clients per month that were paying us a fee to fix their credit. And uh, I was like, wow, this is, this is pretty amazing. I, I, I think I can do this on my own. And I ended up, you know, uh, separating from, from that company, going out on my own and starting my company in 2011, um, which is an interesting story in itself. So like I did it out of, I didn't chase my passion. I did it out of necessity because, you know, I, I wanted to get that income back to where I once was. And that's really the truth, Chaz. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and then from there, I lost everything. If we're talking to the, the small business owner, the mid-sized business owner, I say all the time, you have to be willing to risk or give up what you have to get what you want. And that's what I did for my company Credit Blueprint in 2011. What I gave up was a house that I owned, was $100,000 in a 401k that I had saved up from the mortgage industry, uh, a CLK 500, a beautiful Mercedes that I had to do wow, a voluntary yeah. repo on, $50,000 in credit cards. The list goes on. Friends, family members, things like that. So I gave up like everything that I had worked up until that point Yeah. in order to start this company. Yeah, man. So listen, a lot of people can relate in some ways to that story, right? It may not be exactly... The, the story, by the way, we've got a bunch of people on here, Corey, Victoria, Mike, Forrest from St. Louis, like awesome. Love it, guys. Share this. We're going to get into some strategy here in just a second. So share this podcast out. Um, so, I mean, a lot of people when they start their business, and we have a lot of people listening, and I just know because of conversations who maybe they're, at, let's, let's just say it this way, they're at a job or a business um, that, or, you know, a job, a sales career that they want to start and make that leap into that business. And so some of them are looking at just bootstrapping it, but then others are looking to maybe take on some debt up front to get that launch. Mm -hmm. um, when, when should a business take on debt or should they ever take on debt? Oh uh, yeah, I do. I believe that you should take on some debt, especially in the beginning. The mistake that small businesses make is they go right to getting a partner involved. You know, mm -hmm. if you're working, if you're, if you're W2 right now and you're working in a corporate America and you're like, wow, I got this great idea and I want to start this business, but you sometimes you feel like you're not worthy. And when you feel like you're not worthy, then all of a sudden you go get another entrepreneur that maybe has a business and some capital and then you team up and then you realize you go, oh man, I think I made a mistake. And I've made that mistake a few times in the first yep. couple of years of my business. So to answer that question, Chaz, it's, it's so easy right now to get access to funding, business funding. Like it's super, super easy. Meaning you have a 700 credit score and you're at a W2 job right now. 
you can qualify for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars in business credit cards. And the business credit cards, they're giving them away. I mean, like 0%, 1%, 2%, 3%, like free money pretty much. Yeah. So that, that's the first place that the business owner should start to think okay, I'm thinking about leaving my job. I got this idea. I want to start a business. There's going to be risk involved. Stay away from the partners up front and try to have proof of concept and more leverage before you get someone else's money involved other than business funding or business credit cards or business lines of credit or your own money. So I love it. So you're not necessarily saying, hey, don't ever have a business partner. You're just saying don't do that in exchange because you're desperate for cash up front. And so, Hey, I'm going to go get a business partner who can fund it because you may regret that because you're making a decision based on the financial right now. So, okay. I, let's say I don't have a 700 credit score. It, does that mean then, you know, maybe I'm a 620, 650. It, it, is it all lost for me? Sounds like the next part of that, that person's plan is to get their credit right. So every rich person I've ever interviewed on my podcast, The Power of Credit, uh, which actually that podcast turned into like successful entrepreneurs and it turned into what did you do to grow your net worth and your revenue? And it all leads back to credit. So if you have a 620 credit score, right? Thank you for the layup, Chaz. Let's work <laughs> on getting it to, right? Let's get, yeah. the, get it to a 700 because the 700 personal credit score opens the door for business funding for that yeah. person that's trying to make that transition. That's kind of the magic number. That's, that's the number, man. That, that opens the door. It's yeah. you got a lot of leverage when you have that. Now, I'd like to see people get that even higher. I'd like to see them get it into the 800, but seven's a great place to be. Okay. Uh, I love it. So, so guys, if you're listening to this and you're like, okay, I'm, I'm thinking about jumping in and start my own business. This is a great way, especially if you're in that W2, go get, go get the funding set up right? While you still have that job and still have everything set up. Cause I think that's what happens is people make the jump and then go, crap, I really underestimated the amount of money I was going to need to start this. And now you're in a place where you don't have the revenue coming in to go get the funding that you necessarily needed. So if you're still at that job, get it now, right? Chaz, let me, let me just go a little deeper on that too. Please. So, you know, as a business owner, as someone that's trying to level up in life, you really need to meet yourself where you're at right now. Right. Uh, give me an example of oh, you're fat. Okay. You need to get up and just start walking. Okay. Uh, if you're in an advanced level of exercise, okay. And all you do is lift weights. Maybe you need to add a little cardio. If you're a, if you want to be a business owner, meet yourself where you're at. If you don't have good credit, make the investment in your credit. If your credit is a 700, how do you get it to 800? That's where you're at. And then if you have those scores, how do you access business funding to where you would put something in, in a place where if for six months, because this happened to me, right? I'm speaking from the heart right now. No revenue came in for six months. In 2011, wow. nobody trusted me. If, if you just mentioned Corey, you talking about Corey Bauman? Oh yeah. He's our right. COO. Okay. Yeah, right. Corey. So Corey knows when I, when I was working Keller Williams offices in the beginning, Listen, Chaz, everybody laughed at me. Nobody thought I was cool. Nobody wanted to do business with me. And it was like this transition when I started my company of six months of where's the revenue? You yeah. know, so it's like, if you're going to borrow money, it's a good idea to have six to 12 months there in case the revenue doesn't come in and everybody's giggling at you like they did with me. Well, I get it. They all laughed at me in 2011 when I said I was going to start this networking thing. And they didn't think I was cool. The difference between you and me is you're cool now and I'm still not. I'm still chasing it. I'm still, I'm still trying just, to be. So. Yes, you just need a hat. You just need I, a that's hat. what I need. I need a hat. I love it. Go, go get me a hat somewhere. No, I'm just flat. You need a flat so, brim that, that, that lowers, you know, it takes the cool <laughs> up a little bit. I love it. Uh, so, so, okay. So you said invest in your credit. That was the key phrase I heard you say. I don't know if, and guys, if you have questions for Carl, shoot those on the Facebook page. I'll make sure we ask those. And that's always hard too, because people don't necessarily know what to ask. Because it's like, oh shoot, if I ask a credit question, am I, you know, exposing myself to uh, my own? Uh, I, I think asking you know, my, for a friend. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I'm asking for a friend. Um, so, so Carl, I'm asking for a friend. What does it mean to invest in your credit when you say that? 
Mm, yeah, make the investment. I mean, get with a professional company. There's a lot of there's a lot of ding dongs out there that just got in the credit repair space. Uh, or you know, I just put a video out on Instagram where it's like one thing that's for your credit that might be good for your aunt Joyce or your sister or your brother might not be good for your credit. So I'm really just point blank saying, make an investment. It's a small investment. Pay a professional company to yeah. get your credit to the next level. Stop guessing because like compressing time is important. There's like, if you, if you're good, like I'll speak to the mortgage industry or the real estate pro, like be good at real estate, be the best person at real estate. Don't be the actual source itself. Be the source of the source, which means you need the right yeah. credit repair company to send your credit challenge customers over to. So bringing it back to where I'm going with this, right? Make an investment with a professional company that's going to give you a very personalized plan that's going to say, this is what you need to do to get your credit to the next level. Or if you were going with the trainer, Chaz, yeah, right, right. right? Like this is what you need to do to not be overweight anymore, right? Like, yeah, right. right. Here's this, the plan that works for you. Not everyone else at LA Fitness. So several people agree I'd be cooler with a hat. They say I'm cool, but I'd be cooler with a hat. So we're going to get on that. Uh, so, so give us a strategy or, or is there myths out there about credit that people do that say, oh, if I do this, it improves my credit score, but it really doesn't. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of misinformation about it. And so what's a simple thing that somebody could do or what's a myth that's out there that, you know, doesn't help people that they're doing? You know, it kind of all ties in. I'll throw my... Um... I'll throw my barber under the bus here a little bit. Good guy. We always talk business. So I'm rooting yeah. for him to transition out of this barbershop into his own barbershop. And the conversation always starts with credit. And then how can I use that to get money so I can set my own barbershop up and start hiring people and I'm good. So, right, we're still back at step one, which is he has one credit card and he has another credit card that he's an authorized user on with his mom. So he keeps going, I keep saying, go get that, that third credit card. You got to have three credit cards as a minimum. He keeps going, well, I'm, I'm not going to use it. Like, I, I don't need it. I go, doesn't matter. You need to have at least three credit cards because 30% of your credit score is based on how many credit cards you have in relation to what your credit limit is. Mm. So, so, like, here's another way to look at it. Here's the reverse end of that, right? You have this person that is taking baby steps that has one credit card of his own where he's got one toe in the ocean, right? One little, right? And then he has his mom's credit card that he's an authorized user on. And then, but the other end of that, the more available credit cards you have with very high credit limits, that's the higher your credit scores are going to go. So like people gotcha. get too confused where they go, you know, well, if I have credit cards available to me, available to me, it's kind of like debt. If I had fifty thousand dollars in personal credit cards, it's like having not if you no. manage those cards under thirty, twenty, or ten percent, they are actually an asset. So you need them. You got to go out and get them. Oh, uh, it's an interesting way to look at it. So, so then if I have, let's say, I have two or three business cards or personal cards, how often should I be requesting the line be raised then? Because because yeah. wouldn't that kind of accomplish that similar thing, right? I'm. Maybe it's not a new card, but I've got a current card and I request that right. line to be raised. So to him, right, he's got to get the third one. Like we don't want to talk line yeah, increases sure. with that. Sure. Right? Go back to it with the thing that I'm trying to refine. Meet yourself where you're at, man. Yep, you got I two got credit you. cards. How do we get three? So, but now let's talk to the person that's going, okay, I have six credit cards. I don't need a seventh. I don't need an eighth. Right. Maybe, maybe not. The first place, uh, place that that person should start is how do they get the line increases? How do they call, for example... Uh, let's say you have uh, Chase and your Chase credit card is $15,000 and you owe Chase, let's just say $1,000. Mm -hmm. That is a really good opportunity for you to call Chase up and ask them for a line increase with no fear. Like, honestly, man, I, this is super important. A lot of people just, even our customers that we're coaching, some of our best testimonials, Chaz, is the person that we pushed. Mm. I promise you, I'm talking right into them. I promise you, I want you to call them and ask for the line increase. Oh, I will. A week goes by. They don't do anything. Our coach is calling back again. I need you to trust me. You're going to thank me. You're going to write us a testimonial. You're going to be so proud when you get that five or $10,000 more increase. Okay. So, you know, 
who, like you have to do it with confidence. What are they afraid of though? Good. Thank you. Right. So it's like, they're afraid of the no. Everyone's afraid of the no, right? Mm-hmm. The ugly guy at the bar is afraid that someone's going to turn them down. Right. I mean, like, like I everybody's gotcha. afraid of the no, there's ego involved. Yeah. So like even me, my name's credit Carl, right? Uh, someone in the mortgage business, actually, Corey can attest to that. Uh, Monica, Monica Palantano will give a shout oh, out yeah. to her. Monica, right? yeah. Monica's the one that named me Credit Carl, which I couldn't stand that name in the beginning. I go, can you please not call me Credit Carl? <laughs> you know? So she coined that phrase. I love um, it. But the point is that, you know, everyone just has this ego with credit, man. And it's like, they're so afraid to get turned down. And even myself, I get turned down, but I don't care because here's why, Jess. It's a computer. It's, it's, a, it's somebody yeah, yeah. put their information in there and the computer said yes or no. And there's something that you can do when you get turned down where if you don't like the answer, you call back the next day, you get a live person on the phone and you go, I don't like that answer. And I think I might take my business elsewhere because I've been a really good client and I want someone to take a look at this again and reconsider it. Mm, brilliant. Brilliant. So, hey, we've got a good question that came on the, uh, and it wasn't for a friend. She says, I'm asking for myself. I love it. Mm-hmm. She said, if you have student debt, uh, student loan debt and credit card debt, which is more important to pay off first? Such a good question. Yeah. I like her. I really, I, I do. I don't know her name. I can't see her. But her name is Andriana. Andriana. I love that question. So listen, credit card debt is definitely more important to pay down. So focus on getting your credit cards. I'd work with a professional company, but let's just say you focus on at least wherever you're at, meet yourself where you're at. If you're at a 50% utilization, let's get it to 40. If you're 40, 30 and so on and so forth, get the credit cards in line first. Now let's talk about student loans. Like there's just this, this misconception and this hang up with student loans and people feel like I have to get out of student debt before I can start a business. I have to get out of student debt before I can start investing in X, Y, and Z. And that's just not true. Here's why. Student loans are insanely low as far as the rates. Like if someone's going to give you 4% and say you could pay it back in 20 years, great. It's like a mortgage, man. Like who cares? So it's funny, Chaz, I just talked to um, a young hustling entrepreneur on Instagram. And he asked me that question. He goes, man, I'm getting killed with my student loans right now. I go, okay, what's your interest rate? He goes, oh, like 3.9. I go, how are you getting killed, man? I go, they're deferred. When they come out of deferment, they're 3.9. It sounds like it's no rush whatsoever to pay those off. And I would make minimum payments for as long as I could right now. That's what I feel about student debt. Absolutely. And then, and then, there's this other side of it. Like we're talking about credit to increase credit lines when you need that cash, et cetera, and how to use other people's money, i.e. the, the credit company, the, the credit card that's giving it to you to go use to leverage it. But at the, the same time, it's like there's this, this revenue side of business that has to be increased, right? I mean, as a business owner, it's not just about taking debt. It's about increasing my revenue. How did you do that as a company Like what's been your focus? Is it something you guys focus on every day is growing your top line of your revenue? You know, it was for a little bit and we got sidetracked and it's now it's back to, you know, focused on revenue, man. Like wherever your focus goes, the money flows. If you're, Mm. if you're focused on, man, I have, if you're an individual, like, man, I have so much student debt. And for the next 12 months, I'm going to get myself out of that student debt you're probably not going to increase your income. You're probably not going to increase your net worth or your revenue. As a business owner, it's the same mentality, right? If right now, look, Chaz, Carl Scaramuza, Credit Blueprint, we have debt. If for the next 12 months, I was hyper-focused on how do I make my company debt-free, I'm telling you right now, my revenue doesn't grow. It just Uh, doesn't grow. You know, so I'm focused on uh, the revenue, you know, but we got a blueprint. You got to have a blueprint, right? Right. If you don't have a blueprint, you don't have a roadmap spending other people's money uh, just loosely is a very dangerous place to be. Yeah. I've always looked at it too. Similarly to you. I agree. If you focus on it, that's where your focus is. It, you start focused from a mindset of uh, constriction and cutting and, and, and not expansion and growth and everything else. And your mind just shifts that way. Right. Let me, let me just, I'll simplify for you, right? I'll yeah. let you in. I'll, I'll give you guys a peek of where my mind is right now. Once again, I have debt. 
Um, we're moving our office, not moving our office, we're expanding uh, down to Miami. So we're keeping our Philadelphia branch here and we're, we're expanding down in Miami or we're, we're setting up a sales force sales team down there. And what I'm hyper focused on right now is 5,000 loan officers. Wow. How do I get 5,000 loan officers to send us over one to 10 of their credit turn down customers a month because that's the rep. There's the revenue yeah. right there. Right. right. It's like that, that's the only thing I'm focused on. There's, there's the, that's the most important thing to me right now. So why are you so, going to Miami? Why, why open an office in Miami? I, I, I don't want to be cold anymore, man. Like okay. I got like thin, I got real thin blood. Now it's just something that um, my wife and I, we have talked about for a long time. We're like, I, I don't want to spend any more cold winters here because it's, it, to me, it goes with the health. Like my health is like this. Um, maybe not my health. Let's call it my weight. Like mm-hmm. summer, I'm good. And then as soon as Thanksgiving, Christmas and the cold weather comes, you know, you start packing it on and I'm like, I just want to be in the nice weather. And I saw opportunities down there. I know a lot of people down in Florida um, that are helping us um, get the office up and running and salespeople. So it's the place. Great. Good for you. Yeah. We moved from Minnesota to Texas because I couldn't take the winter anymore. Uh, So I get it. I get it. Hey, a great question, Andriana. Victoria, welcome. Uh, So many people here watching and sharing. Um, Guys, if you have other questions for Carl, please put them in the Facebook uh, page. So how can people follow you? They they say, hey, I love the advice you're giving. I love what you're sharing. Uh, I like your hat. How do I follow you? How do I connect with you? Uh, Creditblueprint.net or my my website, carlscaramuza.com. S-C-A-R-A-M-U-Z-Z-A.com or do my dirty work on Instagram, credit.carl. Send me a DM. I'll personally respond. I'll give you a tip. Send me a, I like the voice messages. Yeah. Those are the people where if your energy is good, your vibrational frequency is, is good. I like the question. I like a credit question. I like a net worth question. I like business funding question. And then what I like to do is not answer you individually, but go on my story or mm. use that as content so I can help a lot of people. Cause that's what I love can that. impact a lot of people, you know? Yeah. I mean, the ability to increase their credit, increase their lines, uh, help their net worth. I mean, that's an interesting tie-in, right? That, that, that how does the fact that you help people with debt actually help their net worth? I mean, that's an interesting tie-in, right? You want to, you want to you want to chat about that? Yeah, let's do it. It's like, so I, I gave you the, the beginnings here, right? I gave you 2011 was just a hunt for more money to make up the money I lost. And then I didn't really love credit. And then I started a business, lost everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I kind of fell in love with the business a little bit. And it was about five years into it that I fell out of love with it. Uh, I really was like, wait, what am I doing here? Are you telling me if I start connecting the dots in my head that I'm fixing people's credit. I'm taking, let's just say a 580 credit score and I'm turning it into a 650 so they can stop renting and then buy their first house. And that's as good as it gets. Cause that's so boring to me. Yeah. And yeah, I, yeah. and I just got, I just lost interest. I was like, I, I, if you're telling me that this is my path and for the rest of my life, I'm going to help people go up 75 points so they can buy their first house, which is really a blueprint for middle America. If that's right. all you do is use your credit to buy your first house, man, you're, you're missing the boat. Mm-hmm. So it was really about me just on this journey over the last couple of years, this quest of what, what is, what can you really do with credit? What does it really mean? What is it meant to successful people that have used it along their journey to grow their net worth? And, and, and all of a sudden I got interested in it again, man. I was like, I love this business again. I love, not only just helping that person that could get their first house and get out of renting, but also like inspiring that person. That's one of our core values on here. If you go on the site is like, it's the last core value. We inspire others to learn more, want more and be more. And in return, we become fulfilled. Ooh, let me say that again, Chess. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Right. Inspiration. We inspire people to learn more, want more and then be more right and we become fulfilled as a company we become fulfilled so now i feel fulfilled i i i, I was missing it before man like i was fixing people's credit to get them into their house it, it was bigger than that so that's that's what's exciting is thinking along the lines of credit to wealth credit to net worth and mm. then that just i started interviewing like people with 
at the time I thought was a lot of money, $20 million net worth and $50 yeah. million net worth that turned into a hundred million, 300 million, 500 million. And they all like all the stories connected. Like, yeah, man, I used my credit and I leveraged it to get access to other people's money or I leveraged it to get office space or I leveraged it to get real estate in order to get really rich, to, to grow my net worth. So I want to ask you a question and I'm, I've been thinking like, <clears throat> I'm thinking about how to phrase it exactly, but I think there's a lot of people that may relate to this. Um, like, I think there's some people that think, hey, don't, don't use credit, don't use other people's money because that's risky, right? You're leveraging out somebody else's money and it's risky. Yep. But, but is it, isn't it more risky to leverage my own? Yeah, 100%. And so what do, you, what do you say to people who are trying to justify that, hey, don't take any debt, don't have any debt, any loan, like, versus leveraging my own cash. Why don't I just save up my own cash and use that? Look, you know, debt is how your company, company's revenue lives in the future, okay? Mm. Right, it's how you do things in the future. Debt, other people's money. Now with that said, Chaz, there is a very fine line, meaning I've, I've interviewed successful entrepreneurs with very large net worths. That yeah. grew their company from zero to a billion and they didn't use anyone else's money. Now, that's the person that has insane revenue growth year after year. They're the unicorn. They're the exception. The exception is I don't need other people's money. We're cash like Apple. Apple doesn't yeah. need anyone else's money. They got $150 million. So if you have that explosive business where you, your revenue is crazy, like your EBITDA is 50%, you're stacking money in the bank. I don't yeah, know. I get it. it sounds like you're doing pretty good. You don't need other people's money, but if you're not and, and you, you know, you need to test things or you need to add employees, meaning like mm. if you could add 10 employees right now and use a couple hundred thousand dollar line of credit, because you already proved it out. Hey, I got two that are great. So now I just got to duplicate what I did here. Now I have 10 people selling for me and that might mean using other people's money. That's how your revenue, your company's revenue lives in the future is mm. that loan. That's really good. That's good too, because what you're also saying is like in your example is making sure that if you're going to go out and leverage other people's money, you're going to do it just like you would in any other investment that you look at it as an investment and say, I'm going to, I'm going to live, I'm going to put my company in the future by this, by using these dollars. And so what's the return? Well, I know if I go get a salesperson, this is what they're going to bring me in return. So it's a pretty good, you know, source of, of looking through that. Let's stay there just for a second. Matt yeah. Manera, you and I were talking about Matt Manera, yeah. Yeah. Um, my new business partner, uh, a friend that I've had for the last couple of years, and uh, went to his boot camp, uh, AC boot camp in Dallas, Texas. Yep. And Matt was on my, uh, one of my live videos, Chaz, uh, you know, right before I went. And he goes, I know why people don't borrow money. Business owners don't borrow. More business owners don't borrow money. That's how he, he prefaced it. I said, how come? He said, they don't have a blueprint, man. They don't have a roadmap. So like, it's, a, it's an interesting question I ask a lot on Instagram. If you're a business owner and you had $150,000, what would you do with it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. What, what should I do with it? So, so there you go. We'll go back yeah. to where I started this. Meet yourself where you're at right now. Where are you right now? If you don't know what you would do with $100,000, but on the other side here, you got a 700 credit score and you could get access to funding, right? Let's meet yourself where you're at. Let's get the funding so and have it there available, but let's get a blueprint. Let's get a roadmap on exactly what you need to do. As our mutual friend, Judge Graham would say, yeah. niche will get you rich. What's that What's niche, niche that you're going to dump your money into that's going to grow your revenue, which is going to grow your net worth? It's so, it's so amazing how they just come in together and they meet there and they intersect on this as you're trying to build that net worth as a business owner. Uh, man, a lot of information. I feel like um, probably we probably barely scratched the surface of it on our time today. Um, guys, we've been blessed today to hear from Carl on this, you know, interesting topic that many people don't want to talk about, right? It's like, I mean, who sits around and talks about their credit score at, you know, the local dinner and party and, and social event. And yet it's so crucial to understand how credit works and like you said, work with professionals who can help you. I love the tips and strategies you shared today. Uh, Carl shared with us and I'll, I'll just restate. So if you want to follow him, follow him on credit.carl on Instagram or creditblueprint.net, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, work with, uh, work with professionals. Carl, thanks so much for being on this episode of Connect, Share, Prosper today, where you just shared a ton of wisdom with our audience today. Really appreciate that. Guys, remember every Monday, noon central, I bring amazing 
professional successful entrepreneurs like Carl on this show. So make sure you tell your friends, subscribe to this page, subscribe to YouTube so that you can be notified every time we put out another episode. Again, until next time, be well. We'll see you on the next episode of Connect, Share, Prosper.